everybody. I'm Pastor Helen. I'm glad you're joining me today. It's the middle of the week, but we're going to do something special to get ourselves ready for Easter. I have my Lent in a Box kit that you can get at Southbrook. You can pick it up on Sunday or if you aren't coming to church and just watching online, give me a call and I will make sure that you get it, okay? Um, so Lent starts uh, today. It's called Ash Wednesday. And in some churches, including ours, we put the mark of the cross with um, ashes either on our hand or on our forehead to remind us that we are getting ready for Jesus' death and resurrection on Easter Sunday. So in my Lent in a Box kit, it says, open before February 17th. Well, today is February 17th, so let's open it and see what's in it. There's a welcome sheet that says, welcome to Lent in a Box. And it explains that we're going to talk about Lent, which is 40 days before Easter. And it talks about how we can celebrate Ash Wednesday and then all the other days coming before Easter to get ready um, to welcome Jesus back to life on Resurrection Day, which is called Easter. And there's going to be activities to do. So I've got the first week's activities right here. Week one, interactive prayer activity. So there's a prayer activity and there's a hands-on activity each week. And then there's going to be a scripture lesson each week called Encounters with Jesus. So let's see what this week has to tell us. Let's start with our hands-on activity. In your box, you will find a roll of paper, just a plain blank piece of paper about three feet long. And it says, we're going to make a special banner that says, Alleluia. Alleluia is a Greek word that means praise the Lord. And it has great joy. It says on our and our sheet, it says that Christians all over the world, no matter what language they speak, they still use the word Alleluia. Many faith communities have a tradition of burying the Alleluia during the season of Lent. Now, I've never heard of that before, but I think it's kind of a fun idea. Alleluia means praise the Lord, and we think of it as a very special way of, of worshiping, it's a special way of uh, reminding ourselves about how wonderful our God is. But during Lent, we remember that Jesus died on the cross. And it's kind of a sad time. And so we don't want to cheer and sing happy songs, perhaps. And so there are churches who say, we're not going to sing any songs. We're not going to say the word Alleluia for all of Lent. So I asked a friend to help me. And she created, from our roll of paper, this big banner that says, Alleluia. I'm hoping that you will make an Alleluia banner. You don't have to bury it. It would be buried in the snow these days, wouldn't it? But you can roll it up and put it away and save it for Easter Sunday. And then maybe on Easter Sunday, you could put it in a window at your house or put it outside somewhere where people would see it and know that you are celebrating Jesus. You see how it's spelled? A-L-L-E-L-U-I-A. -L -L -E -L -L Alleluia. That would be a fun activity. And so sometimes on Ash Wednesday we sing one last Alleluia song. Let's sing one now. Jesus is a rock, he's a firm foundation His is a kingdom that cannot be moved He is a king of every tribe and nation Hallelujah, hallelujah Oh, oh hallelujah Oh, oh hallelujah Oh, oh hallelujah The whole wide world 
So on our week one interactive prayer activity, it says to look for, in our box, the prayer cube page. And this is your prayer cube page. We're going to cut it out. And then fold it and tape it to make it into a box. You can go ahead and pause this video while you cut yours out. And when you're done cutting it out, I'll show you how to make it into a box, okay? See you in a minute. Okay, did you cut yours out? It should look something like this. For the next step, you're going to need tape. So pause the video and run and get some tape. All right. So do you have your tape? The next step you're going to do, see all these little tabs that say tape here? I want you to fold them back. Fold, fold them down. It might take you a minute, so turn off the tape while you're doing this. And then fold on the solid lines. Right there, and the solid lines. Okay, I'm going to start in the middle by folding. Oops, sorry. Folding this like that. I can tell already that my cube is not going to be very perfect, but that's okay. It's going to work all right for exactly what we want it to do. And I'm going to pull that side up, and I'm going to tape it right over the top. Okay, I'm going to tape up this side. And the next side. I think the last box, the last cover of our box is going to be the hardest to do. I'm going to fold it over like that and tape all three of the edges. And I hope yours is working out better than mine. It's not easy, is it? But it didn't turn into a very good cube. Okay, but it is a cube. It's a box, right? And what you're going to do with this is take turns throwing it down. And whatever came up, it says, Dear God, thank you for, and I could say, thank you for this beautiful sunshine on the snow. I like sun and snow together. Let's do it again. It says, Dear God, I pray for, and I'm going to say, for my friend who is in the hospital. Dear Jesus, please help him to get better. One more. Shake it. Oh, it says, Dear God, please show me how to. Hmm. What would I want God to show me how to do something? What would you want God to show you how to do something? Maybe I would like him to show me how to take good care of my friend who is sick. Maybe I could, uh, he could teach me what words I could say to help my friend feel better. Or maybe he could help me to draw a picture or write a note to my friend to make him feel better. Well, I hope you will have fun with the prayer cube. Keep it out on your kitchen table, and perhaps every time you sit down to eat a meal, you and your family could shake the prayer cube and pray um, for something. Some of the others say, Dear God, please help me. God is so good. He can help us do so many things. So don't forget to pray. So that is our interactive prayer activity. 
And then finally, we have the encounters with Jesus. It says, water to wine. I'm going to read it for you. Jesus' first recorded miracle happened at a wedding in the town of Canaan in Galilee. Jesus attended the wedding with his mother Mary and his disciples. Now, traditionally, weddings lasted for days and the whole community would attend. For something to go wrong at a wedding would be really embarrassing to the family hosting the party. When Mary heard that they had run out of wine, she told Jesus. Jesus said to her, Dear woman, why do you bring me into this? He says, My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do what he tells you. Mary had faith that Jesus could solve the problem. So six stone waters stood nearby. Each jar could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Oh, that's a lot of water. You know your kitchen garbage can? That would be about half of one of these jars. So imagine how much water six, of, six jars would hold. That would be 12 big kitchen garbage cans full of water. Jesus then told them, Now dip some water out and take it to the person in charge of the dinner. They did what he said, and the person in charge tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He didn't know where it had come from, but the servants who had brought the water knew. Then the person in charge called the groom to one side. He said to him, Everyone brings out the first best wine first. They bring out the cheap wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best until now. And this is how Jesus showed his glory through the miracle he performed. Imagine if you were one of those servants. You knew that the wine had run out. This was a problem. And then Jesus, this guy, says, fill up those jars over there with water. It would have taken them pretty long to fill up those jars from a well. They might have had to carry the water quite a distance. So they filled up those jars and they knew there was water in there. They kept filling them and filling them until they were full. And then Jesus said, dip some out. And as soon as they dipped some out, they saw it was wine. What do you think they thought? When they saw that the water had turned to wine, the Bible says that Jesus' disciples had faith in Jesus. Do you think that this encounter with Jesus also changed the lives of the servants? What does this encounter with Jesus tell you about who Jesus is? Who is Jesus? I hope that you know that Jesus is God, that he is the only one that could take water and turn it into wine. Do you remember back in the story of Exodus when Moses led the people out of Egypt? Do you remember the plagues, the locusts, the frogs? Well, the first one was taking the water and turning it into something. What did God turn that water in? Two. He turned it into blood. Do you remember that? Moses took his rod and all the water in Egypt became blood. Now Jesus took water and turned it into wine. He was showing everybody that he is God. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for showing us that you are God. Thank you that we can trust you to take care of our problems. Lord, I pray that you would help us each to grow closer to you during this Lenten season. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you'll come back on Sunday for our kids' church lesson, and then next Wednesday to do another activity from our Lent in a Box. Bye now.